been an incredible six months, hasn't it? At the start of this year, AI was, let's face it, a gimmick. A cheesy tool used by Instagram influencers to switch out skies on poorly shot photos. Six months later, the technology has advanced so quickly that it feels like Blade Runner, Enemy of the State, Minority Report and CSI were actually documentaries and George Orwell's 1984 was a reference manual. With the latest generative features in Adobe Photoshop and the mind-blowing Dragan, we're witnessing a paradigm shift. Welcome, my friends, to the post-truth era of photography. Of course, a strong argument to make that the post-truth era of photography arrived when Photoshop was first released. And if I wanted to be truly pedantic, I could say that photography has never been truly truthful. Multiple exposure, combination printing, airbrushing, pen retouching and sandwich negatives are techniques nearly as old as photography itself. But let's be honest here, these 21st century techniques, many of which are widely available in consumer software applications, represent a seismic shift in our ability to create or manipulate images and in so doing to create or manipulate truth. Previously, we were only able to manipulate what was observed, but now we can also manipulate what is merely inferred. When we look at a photograph, our mind is able to imagine what lies beyond the borders of that frame. We easily summon up that image data in our mind's eye and imagine a river in a photograph extending off across the landscape out of frame or the mountains stretching off beyond the horizon. Now though, a computer is able to infer what lies beyond an image's boundaries and, more importantly, to realistically generate it. When we look at a photograph of a lion with its mouth closed, we are able to picture its teeth. Now, though, a computer is able to infer what those teeth look like and to realistically generate them from the observed to the inferred. This technology like so many that we've been seeing lately, is in its early stages. But even at this point in time, the capabilities have been blowing our tiny minds. Adobe have been catching flack for many years now for not being innovative enough, for being slow to release new features, and for not fully embracing technologies such as AI. Turns out they weren't being slow, they were just biding their time. Adobe have rolled out many notable features in Photoshop over the years. Layers were introduced way back in 1994, the History Palette in 98, the Healing Brush in 2002, Content Aware Fill in 2010, and the first machine learning tools in 2015. And as groundbreaking as those tools were and are, this latest feature, Generative Fill, is an exponentially bigger deal. Yes, Generative Fill sounds a bit like the bass player in a progressive rock band from 1974, but it's actually the post-processing endgame, the conjunction of retouching and AI. Based on the number of reaction videos in my YouTube feed, I'm guessing we're all pretty impressed with what Adobe have done here. Generative fill could actually be called inferred fill. The machine learning toolset used by this feature, Adobe Sensei, has been taught to understand what lies beyond the bitmap pixels within the photo frame. Using the Adobe Stock Library as its classroom, Sensei has been trained on millions of your images. This training enables it to make educated guesses about what to do with the pixels in the area of the photograph you've selected, whether there is image data there or not. And as amazing as the results can be, 
it's still evident that Adobe are more at the DALI level of sophistication than the mid-journey end. The larger the area you try and fill, the worse the outcome will be. And at this stage, it's not great at summoning objects from nothing. I can only imagine how good this feature will be when Adobe elevate it to the levels of quality currently available in Midjourney 5.1 and beyond. The uses for this technology are many, but what it excels at, even at this early stage, is object removal. Forget that clunky old content aware fill or using the patch tool. You can flawlessly remove items from images no matter how complicated the space they used to occupy is. Skilled Photoshop retouchers have been able to do this sort of thing for a while, but the point is that now literally anyone can do this in seconds flat. Simply drag a selection around the object or person you wish to remove and hit the generative fill button. If it doesn't get it right with its first batch of three options, generate another three. I'm sure you've seen those posts on Reddit where someone asks a skilled Photoshop user to remove someone from a photograph and we all admire the resulting before and after. All those years perfecting that skill, selecting, cloning, copying, blending, smoothing, fixing light, shadow, and color, they're suddenly irrelevant. Got a real estate photograph isn't quite big enough for the advert. Simply expand the boundaries and use generative fill to seamlessly and realistically fill that empty space. The applications for this generative technology are huge and as Adobe develop and improve it further, are only gonna get more impressive. Product photography, real estate, portraiture, publicity. It's hard to think of a photographic niche that couldn't put it to good or bad use. This new feature by Adobe is sure to set off an AI arms race as the other software companies rush to bring out comparable, or hopefully better, features in their photo apps. I find it hard to believe, for instance, that Skylum, who have built Luminar Neo's entire USP around AI, will not be developing their own generative fill tools right about now. Ditto Capture One, Photo Raw, and Pixelmator, if they have any sense. Then we have Draggan, like Adobe's bombshell new feature, Draggan caused a similar stir when it was first announced. Unlike the Adobe tool, however, Draggan is not publicly available. At this stage, it's simply a research tool developed by the Max Planck Institute for Informatics in Germany. This new tool is a step towards the realization of Deckard's photo processor in the movie Blade Runner. If you haven't seen the film, if so, why not? The imagined photo processor enabled an operator to move beyond the confines of the image data and interpolate useful secondary information based on what was already in the scene. The difference between that and Draggan is obviously that Draggan is simply inventing the new image data. It enables you to process photographs in an entirely new way that once it's in the public's hands, it's going to create far bigger ripples than generative fill. At the very least, it will put an end to every ruined family photograph. Auntie Doris has got her eyes shut. No worries, just drag the eyelids up and the software will realistically generate the eyes. Photo clipping the left edge and one half of Uncle Brian missing. Just drag the missing side in and the software will generate the other half of his body. It will revolutionize celebrity photography where previously there were no do-overs. Red carpet moments where the subject wasn't captured correctly can now be perfectly framed. The paparazzi is going to bloody love it. All kinds of commercial photography can and will be heavily invested in this GAN-based technology as and when it's available for public use. All those edge cases that people said would be unaffected by AI, they are all absolutely fair game for this technology now. Weddings, events, sports and news photography will without a doubt be impacted. You will not be able to believe any photography that you see is original and unretouched. Post-truth.
Now, the simple fact is that in the majority of use cases for these technologies, it simply won't matter that the photographs have been heavily manipulated. Product photography, for instance, is already heavily processed. Ditto fashion and real estate. Nobody looks at a fashion spread in Vogue, Vanity Fair, Marie Claire or Harper's Bazaar and expects documentary realism, we all understand that what we are seeing is a fiction. Nobody looks at an advert for a fast food chain and expects the burgers and the images to reflect what they'll get at the drive through But what about celebrity photography? Very few people in that industry are troubled by little things such as conscience or scruples. If some up-and-coming singer is photographed stepping out of a nightclub in a revealing dress, it will be ludicrously simple to nudge the outfit slightly to summon up a wardrobe malfunction. If the presence of some other celebrity in a photograph is ruining the narrative you're trying to fake, then simply remove them and it changed the context instantly. Smiles become frowns, wide open eyes become half closed and strung out, walking separately becomes holding hands, Sitting close becomes kissing. Post-truth. Then there's the question of art, which is a whole different matter. In many cases, when it comes to art, anything goes because it's just about creativity and not realism. But what about something like photography competitions? Even at this early stage of the technology in Photoshop, you'd be hard pushed to spot these manipulations. Does it matter that landscape photographs will be heavily tweaked? Maybe not to everyone, but it matters to me. If I wanted to capture imagined landscapes, then I'd have taught myself Unreal Engine. It matters to me that a landscape photograph is an honest depiction of an actual scene. A nanosecond of actual time, real photons of light captured and recorded on an image sensor or a rectangle of cellulose. It's one thing to clone out some dust spots, correct the white balance and straighten the horizon, but it's a whole other thing to add a tree or a boat or an entire fucking mountain range. If I was running a photography competition in the future, I'd be making the supply of the original RAW file a mandatory requirement for entry. Just as we've seen with the unmoderated versions of generative image systems such as Stable Diffusion, there will simply be no stopping this technology. Even if governments legislate against it, it will undeniably just go underground and be used anyway. And besides, do we really trust our elected officials and public servants not to use it themselves? Even if we do stupidly trust our government, can you imagine the power of this technology for state propaganda purposes? The state-sponsored hacking influence and propaganda teams in China and Russia are probably nursing throbbing hard-ons at the possibilities they now have at their disposal. When they combine this technology with their ongoing astroturfing, hacking, trolling and social media-based influence of foreign nationals, the potential is virtually limitless. Just last week, an extremely poorly executed AI-generated image of a bomb at the Pentagon wiped a couple of billion off the stock market. Every time it feels like there's a pause in these incredible new technologies and we all gratefully exhale, something new comes along. My focus is on photography because that's my passion. But the same machine learning advancements are impacting and transforming film and video, music, art and writing. The tsunami has breached the harbour walls and the water is rushing towards the town. The ways in which we humans choose to express ourselves have been automated and nothing's going to be the same again. There were occasions when Big Brother devoted his order for the day to commemorating some humble rank-and-file party member whose life and death he held up as an example worthy to be followed. Today, he should commemorate Comrade Ogilvy. It was true that there was no such person as Comrade Ogilvy, 
But a few lines of print and a couple of fake photographs would soon bring him into existence.